this video is going to be really spicy. Because I know a lot of people are probably going to disagree with me, and that's totally fine. All I ask, all I ask is you just hear me out. Just hear me out and let me explain my opinions behind this, okay? And if you still disagree by the end of this video, that's cool. We can still be friends. We can still be mutuals, man. It's totally fine because you can disagree with somebody and still be cool with them. That is a possibility in the world that we live in. Some people may not realize that at times, but it's a fact. So I'm going to explain why WrestleMania 19 is not a top 5 WrestleMania of all time. Before we start though, please make sure to subscribe, like, share, and turn on the notifications for this YouTube channel to be updated with all pro wrestling content that I post and to be updated when we go live every single Sunday. 5 p.m. Eastern time zone for the No Name Wrestling Podcast. We go live every Sunday, like I said, and sometimes we allow the viewers and subscribers to come on the show and chat with us and debate with us from time to time about certain topics, so be on the lookout for that for the open mic episodes, is what we call them, but I'm going to talk about why WrestleMania 19 is not a top five WrestleMania of all time, and I feel like it's going to... uh be a very 50-50 uh, controversial conversation that we're going to have, but I'm ready for it. First things first, WrestleMania 19 is not a bad WrestleMania. It's a very good WrestleMania. Shawn Michaels versus Chris Jericho, best match on the show right there. The three big main events, Hulk Hogan versus Mr. McMahon, somehow that was a very entertaining and fun match to watch. Rock vs. Austin 3. Some people feel Rock vs. Austin 3 is the best Rock and Austin match at WrestleMania, which I'm not going to dispute that. Kurt Angle vs. Brock Lesnar in the main event, that was solid. I mean, there were some, you know, there, there were some dry moments of the show or some iffy moments of the show you can name, but that's with all WrestleMania. It's not a perfect WrestleMania from start to finish. Every WrestleMania has a bad match, a dud, so I can't really, you know, tax WrestleMania 19 for that. Overall, it was a very good show, more good than bad, but it's not a top five WrestleMania of all time. It's always drove me bananas for years that people place WrestleMania 19 on this higher echelon pedestal. I get it's a very good WrestleMania, but... I just always felt in my heart there were other WrestleManias that were better than that. And I'm going to talk about the WrestleManias I place above WrestleMania 19. Obviously, WrestleMania 17, for many people, still is the GOAT WrestleMania. So I'm not even going to really dive into too many details why this is just a better WrestleMania. Like, most people already know, I'm assuming, WrestleMania 17 is just the better overall WrestleMania. Oh, but let's talk about the best WrestleMania of the Ruthless Aggression Era. The number one WrestleMania of the Ruthless Aggression Era and still a top five WrestleMania of all time. WrestleMania 21, and I will stand on business with that one. I will debate anybody to the death with that, bro. WrestleMania 21, hands down, is better than WrestleMania 19. The opening match was Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio, one of the best opening WrestleMania matches of all time, which led to one of the best storylines in 2005. The first ever Money in the Bank ladder match, arguably for many people, still the greatest Money in the Bank ladder match still to this day which helped propel Edge to become a big main event star for the future for years to come. Undertaker vs. Randy Orton, legend vs. legend killer. Perfect story, a perfect match, and they had a very good feud that led on throughout that year as well. I mean, my gosh, Kurt Angle vs. Shawn Michaels was on that show. That's a top five WrestleMania match for many people. Kurt Angle and Shawn Michaels happened on that show. That match alone, to me, is better than any match that happened at WrestleMania 19 alone. And not to mention, to top it off, John Cena and Batista both won their first world titles that night, and those two guys would go on to become the two biggest stars of the Ruthless Aggression era who were built up in that era for the future. WrestleMania 21 all around was just a very, very, very good WrestleMania with feel-good moments. I mean, it had its duds in there, like... You know, Trish Stratus versus Christy Hemme wasn't so great. Of course, the sumo match with Aki Bono and Big Show, that's not something you want to remember either. But everything else that I named, way more good than bad on that show. And all around, this to me was the most important WrestleMania of that era because it builds so much for the future. And it all around just had better match quality, better storytelling, bigger moments. WrestleMania 21 is just a better WrestleMania. I swear to you, WrestleMania 22 gotta be the most slept on and underrated WrestleMania of all time that does not get the love and respect as it should. Very good WrestleMania, and yes, I'm putting that over WrestleMania 19 as well. It doesn't clear. It doesn't clear. I mean, it's very neck and neck. I wouldn't say it clears. That's just too disrespectful. Like, WrestleMania 19 and WrestleMania 22, to me... Very neck and neck, but I still give the edge to WrestleMania 22, man. The Money in the Bank ladder match on that show, very fun to watch, very entertaining. I mean, that Money in the Bank ladder match was great. 
Edge versus Mick Foley in the hardcore match. Probably the greatest hardcore match in WWE history, bro. Shawn Michaels versus Mr. McMahon was even a good entertaining match. Shawn Michaels versus Mr. McMahon is better than Hulk Hogan versus Mr. McMahon at WrestleMania 19. Shawn Michaels and Mr. McMahon was a more entertaining match and a better match overall. The world title matches, I mean... Rey Mysterio winning the World Heavyweight Championship, paying homage to the late, great Eddie Grell. May he rest in peace, man. And the triple threat with Randy Orton and Kurt Angle in there, that was decent as well. Probably deserved more time, but it delivered for what it needed to be in the main event. John Cena vs. Triple H, one of the most underrated and slept on WrestleMania main events of all time, bro. The crowd interaction was great. I thought the chemistry these two had this night was very good as well, man. Like, this might be a hot take. John Cena vs. Triple H is better than Kurt Angle and Brock Lesnar. That's a better WrestleMania main event than Kurt Angle and Brock Lesnar. Well, now we're going to get a little controversial because I said I wasn't going to get disrespectful comparing WrestleMania 22 to WrestleMania 19. Very close. WrestleMania 24 takes a leap. Gaps WrestleMania 19. It's not even close. WrestleMania 24 is a top five WrestleMania of all time still to this day, and it clears WrestleMania 19 in my book. WrestleMania 24's opening match was Finley and JBL in the Belfast Brawl, and that was a banger match right there. The Money in the Bank ladder match when CM Punk won, bro. Oh my gosh, one of the best Money in the Bank ladder matches of all time. Let me tell you, the Money in the Bank ladder matches from about WrestleMania 21 to WrestleMania 25, bro. All great Money in the Bank ladder matches that hit harder than crack did in the 80s. And I didn't do crack in the 80s because I wasn't even alive in the 80s. I ain't never done crack in my life. But I can tell you whether it was the 80s, 90s, 2000s, or even now, the Money in the Bank ladder matches hit harder than crack does, has ever does in its lifetime, bro. Especially the one at WrestleMania 24. Banger match right there. Shawn Michaels versus Ric Flair in the career threatening match. One of the greatest WrestleMania matches of all time. Ric Flair was 59 years old at that time frame, bro. And he was able to go in the ring with the guy who I think is the greatest interim performer in WWE history, the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels, and put on a banger match right there. The triple threat match for the WWE Championship, Randy Orton versus John Cena versus Triple H. Very good triple threat match with a shocking outcome. I think one of the most shocking wins in WWE history. Randy Orton beat John Cena and Triple H at WrestleMania, and there was like maybe 8% of the population of the human, you know, population in the world who thought Randy Orton was going to win that match. And he did, and that was shocking. Floyd Mayweather versus The Big Show, one of the best celebrity matches in WWE history. And then the main event, Undertaker versus Edge for the World Heavyweight title. Very good match. Slept on WrestleMania main event right there. Undertaker and Edge also had a great feud that year in 2008. All around from top to bottom, WrestleMania 24 to me is a way better WrestleMania than WrestleMania 19. I'm putting WrestleMania 31 over WrestleMania 19. The ladder match for the IC title, oh my gosh, that was great right there. Sting versus Triple H was a very fun match that had so much nostalgia, just the wrong person won. Sting should have won that match, but that was like a flashback to the Attitude Era with NWO and DX getting involved. It was a fun match for the Attitude Era fans to engage with and see a dream match that nobody ever thought would happen right there. Bray Wyatt and Undertaker, good build-up, good solid match as well. John Cena versus Rusev for the U.S. title, that was a very good match as well. Rusev coming out on that tank, how can we forget about that too, man? I mean, and rumors were, from what I heard, I mean, he was smashing Lana in that tank too. That's what I heard, that's what the streets were saying. So, hey, Rusev might be top five for that, man. Salute to that man right there, man. He might be top five alone for that. Can't confirm it because I wasn't there, but that's what I've heard, man. That's what the streets are saying, man. That's what the streets are saying. And not to mention the main event. Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar, probably one of the most unpredictable WrestleMania main events that you really didn't know what to expect. Oh my gosh, how can I forget Randy Orton versus Seth Rollins too, man. The greatest RKO of all time happened at that WrestleMania, man. Randy Orton versus Seth Rollins happened at that WrestleMania as well. What the greatest RKO of all time, and that led, of course, to the heist of the century with the main event, which I was talking about. Roman Reigns going to this match, being a little controversial after that Royal Rumble, and not really feeling like a true WrestleMania main event guy yet, coming fresh off the shield about a year ago, but Brock Lesnar was the most dominant guy in that company. So nobody knew what was going to happen, bro, and that turned out to be a very good match to watch, very unpredictable, and then Seth Rollins cashing in was like icing on the cake, bro. Like, that was a perfect way to end that WrestleMania. Overall, WrestleMania 31, it's better than WrestleMania 19. Hey, I'm putting WrestleMania 39 over WrestleMania 19, especially night one itself, you can remove night two if you want, but night one alone, 10 out of 10 show, I mean, my gosh, the main event, 
Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus The Usos. My gosh, that was an exciting match to watch back and forth. Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair is one of the top three greatest women's matches I've ever seen in WWE history. That could have also easily been the main event right there if it had wanted to. You know, even that, that Fatal 4 men's tag team match that nobody expected to bang like that, bro, that match was on fire! That match was lit! Logan Paul versus Seth Rollins, that was a banger match right there as well. I mean, my gosh. And then night two, bro. The triple threat for the IC title, Gunther versus Sheamus versus Drew McIntyre. Maybe the greatest triple threat match I've ever seen. It may be the greatest triple threat match I've ever seen in WWE history, bro. Not to mention the main event, Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes, one of the best WrestleMania main events of all time that was so unpredictable and had such a shocking outcome with Cody Rhodes losing and everything and Roman Reigns retaining to continue his run as champion. Like, WrestleMania 39, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm putting it over WrestleMania 19 as well. WrestleMania 40 might be the greatest WrestleMania of all time. I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying it is, but it's in the conversation. WrestleMania 40 is definitely better than WrestleMania 19. WrestleMania 40 arguably could be the greatest WrestleMania of all time. It's 1,000% in the conversation. It's 1,000% in the conversation, man. Like, WrestleMania 40 was such a feel-good show, man. Like, WrestleMania 40 is one of the shows that just made you love being a wrestling fan as a whole. You're going to tell your grandkids about WrestleMania 40, man. Like, you'll fully remember where you were the day of WrestleMania 40 for night one and two, whether you were there in person or watching at home. You'll remember how you felt, what you were drinking, what you was eating, who you was with. You'll fully remember everything about WrestleMania 40 in your mind about where you were and everything because it was such a great show all around from night one. Becky Lynch and Rhea Ripley. Great match, Sami Zayn and Gunther. Gunther's reign ending as IC champion. Shocking moment. That was fun to watch. The latter match was very good to watch. The main event, The Rock coming back to team up with Roman Reigns to face Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes. Epic. Seth and Drew for night two opened the show for the world title. That was great. And then Damian Priest cashing in the money in the bank, becoming the second person in history to do so. I mean, my gosh, Bailey versus Nia Jax, that was a good match to watch right there. That was solid. The triple threat with Logan Paul, Randy Orton, and Kevin Owens for the U.S. title. That was good. AJ Styles and LA Knight, they also put on a banger match, if you ask me. Not to mention the big main event, Cody Rhodes pinning Roman Reigns 1-2-3 to finish the story. That may be a top five WrestleMania moment of all time, bro. Like, to have what we had from, you know, The Undertaker showing up and Seth coming out in the shield gear. And we also thought John Moxley was going to come out as well. Cena and Rock also being involved. Oh, my gosh. Like, all around, WrestleMania 40 was just more epic and more better. Those are the WrestleManias that I fully wholeheartedly 100% are better than WrestleMania 19, man. Some of those I even think clear WrestleMania 19. Like, I get WrestleMania 19 is a good WrestleMania, but I do think it gets a little bit overhyped, and I'm not afraid to use that word. It gets a little bit overhyped, you know, sometimes, if you ask me. Like, it's a good WrestleMania, but it's not the best WrestleMania of the Ruthless Aggression era. It's not a top five WrestleMania of all time, and it's definitely not a top 10 WWE pay-per-view of all time, if you ask me. That may be a hot take for some people, but some of y'all may disagree. Some of y'all may disagree, and that's totally fine. We can all have our own perspectives and opinions about things, especially when it comes to pro wrestling. We're all not going to agree on everything, and all of us are not going to also like every single thing. And I like WrestleMania 19. I just feel like some of y'all pushed the narrative a little too much, hyping it up and putting it in positions and places that it doesn't belong, because I do think there are other WrestleManias that are better, and I matched it bar for bar, broke it down to y'all with matches and everything, so I got my receipts for it. I think, you know, those WrestleManias that I named are better than WrestleMania 19, and most of them that I named, I think most of them clear WrestleMania 19. Like, in my opinion, in no particular order, the top five greatest WrestleManias of all time, WrestleMania 17, WrestleMania 21, WrestleMania 24, WrestleMania 39, and WrestleMania 40. WrestleMania 31 was in there, but 39 and 40 I do think are better than 31, so I gotta take that one out, but... Even if those WrestleManias hadn't happened, 31 is still better than WrestleMania 19. 22 is still better than WrestleMania 19, like I mentioned before. So, you could even argue WrestleMania 23. I didn't even talk about that one. WrestleMania 23 low-key might be better than WrestleMania 19. Not saying it is, but for some people, it might be. So, I always just felt, you know, the 19th WrestleMania in WWE history is historic. It's like a true Ruthless Aggression Era type vibe WrestleMania for sure in that peak time and in that era so maybe it's the nostalgia for people why it hits so well and why it's you know so high on some people's list which we all get nostalgia fever so i can't fault people for that you know what i mean but i just always felt in my heart of hearts that show to show match to match 
storytelling to storytelling, bar for bar. Just always felt there were other WrestleManias that just eclipsed WrestleMania 19 or were just a little bit better. And I named the ones that I think were better, and I gave y'all the receipts wise. So let me know in the comment section if y'all agree, if y'all disagree, and let me know, you know, how y'all really feel about WrestleMania 19.